three legal forms of business organizations, sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. This video is about corporation. A corporation is a legal entity that's separate from its owners. This legal entity can enter contracts, it can own property, and it can sue and it can be sued. This idea of a separate legal entity from the owners is critical to the idea of corporation. The corporation itself acts as if it were a person. In fact, it is a person under the law. So this legal human being called a corporation is owned by shareholders who are real people. Two types of corporations that we'll take a look at. The public corporation and the private corporation. First, the public corporation. In a public corporation, shares are widely held and available for sale to the general public. So when we say available for sale and widely held, a good example would be the Toronto Stock Exchange. At the end of March 2011, the average daily volume on the Toronto Stock Exchange was 489 million shares. A private corporation. A private corporation is a corporation where the shares are held by only a few people. And those shares are not available for sale. So, an example of the private corporation. The corporation itself might have four owners. It may be that each owner has one share, so a total of four shares at 25% ownership each. So each of these shareholders owns one quarter of the corporation. Together, it is the corporation itself. It is the business. In many ways, the private corporation acts like a partnership when there are multiple people involved. Each of these shareholders has agreed to work together. It's not easy for them to sell their shares to another party because the other three parties would have had to agree on who they were going to accept into the corporation. Advantages of corporation. Continuity. The corporation acts as if it were a human, but it's a legal human. It's not a live human. It can last forever. The Hudson's Bay Company is the oldest corporation in Canada. It was established in 1670. It started out hundreds of years ago trapping beavers in Canada to make fur coats in Europe. Today, that corporation still exists, but it's moved into retail. The shareholders, or the owners, of a corporation have limited liability. Sole proprietorship and general partners, in contrast, have unlimited liability. I'll explain unlimited liability very quickly first, and then we'll talk about limited liability. So what is unlimited liability? Well, let's suppose you had a coffee shop and it failed. The coffee shop had a debt of $200,000. You sold all the assets of the business for $50,000 and creditors were still owed $150,000. They want their money. They claim that you personally owe them $150,000 as a sole proprietor or as a general partner. Well, unlimited liability means you personally owe that money. Your personal property is at risk. In contrast, corporate owners have limited liability. What would happen if the coffee shop was incorporated and it failed? Well, the business still has $200,000 in debts. The business itself may have sold off all of its assets for a total of $50,000, leaving a debt to creditors of $150,000. Here's how limited liability is different from unlimited liability. The creditors still want their money, but the response from the corporation is, sorry, the corporation has no money left. We've gone out of business. 
well, their response might be, but what about the owner's assets? They have cars, they own homes, they have savings, they should pay us back. No. Limited liability means your personal assets are safe. You as the owner are separate from the business itself. Corporate owners have limited liability. So when you have limited liability, your personal property is safe. Another advantage of the corporation is that it's a bit easier to raise money. There's more options. Let's suppose that Triple X Coffee Incorporated is 100% owned by Jeff. Jeff has this idea that he wants to expand the business and he needs $12 million in order to do so. Well, one option that Jeff has to raise $12 million is to try to borrow the money. Debt financing. Borrow the money from the bank. Well, it may be tough for Jeff to borrow $12 million from the bank. They may see it as too risky. Or maybe Jeff does not want to borrow $12 million and have to pay the interest back. What else can he do? As a corporation, there is a second option. And that option is equity financing. Jeff can sell shares in the corporation. How does this work? You may know the term going public or IPO. An IPO is an initial public offering. It's the first time a corporation has made shares available for sale to the general public. So in this case, what Jeff has chosen to do is he's cut the corporation up into 10 million small pieces of pie. 10 million shares, in other words. What he has done in order to raise $12 million is Jeff has sold 4 million shares at $3 each and generated the $12 million and expanded the business. Jeff now owns 60% of Triple X Coffee Incorporated and the general public owns 40%. Whoever has bought those shares, and it may be thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, a million people. We don't know, they've been sold on the open market. Disadvantages of the corporation. Startup costs can be very, very high. The cost to register a sole proprietorship or a partnership is approximately $60. It's a fairly easy transaction and it can be done over the internet. In contrast, the cost to incorporate can be substantially higher. Several hundred dollars to the government for registering the corporation, but often the process is complicated enough that lawyers are required. And if lawyers are required, the cost to incorporate could be $1,000 or more, depending on the complexity of your business. Double taxation is another large disadvantage to the corporation. Here's how it works. The following income statement is for Triple X Coffee Incorporated. Triple X Coffee generated revenues of $300,000 and after all of the operating costs and expenses are deducted, there's a net income before taxes have been paid of $101,000. Now, because the corporation is considered to be a separate entity from the owners, the corporation has to pay income taxes to the government. In our case, the income tax rate is 12%. So, Triple X Coffee Incorporated must pay taxes of just over $12,000. Now, that leaves a net income of $88,800. Now, let's suppose that Jeff decides he wants to take that $88,000. It's profit, he owns the company, he wants to benefit from his hard work. When profits are taken out of a corporation, that's called paying dividends. So Jeff issues dividends from the corporation to himself. What would then have to happen is Jeff would show $88,880 in income at the personal level. Jeff then has to file income taxes personally and pay an additional $23,000 as an individual. So as you can see, the same money has been taxed twice. Once at the corporate level and once again at the individual level once dividends have been paid. Many regulations in incorporating a long set of rules that dictate what type of business you've decided to be in, where you will conduct business, 
who the leadership is going to be, and so forth. Stockholder revolt. It may be that the shareholders you've sold shares to are not necessarily happy. The shareholders have different views about where the business should go. In the corporation, shareholders have a right to learn about what the management of the company is doing and to vote on critical issues. The addition of hundreds or possibly even thousands of additional owners, shareholders, adds to the complexity of decision making. There's also the threat of a hostile takeover. How does that work? Well, recall that Triple X Coffee Incorporated wanted to expand. Jeff sold 40% of the shares to the general public in order to generate $12 million, which was used to expand the corporation. Well, let's suppose the corporation has reached a point where Jeff has decided he wants to expand it even further. Well, what may happen is Jeff may sell additional shares. So his personal ownership of the corporation now drops to 46%, and those additional shares are now floating around in the public. A corporation works much like a democracy. Each common share typically gets one vote. In this case, you might think that Jeff's at risk of losing control of the corporation. He only owns 46%. Well, keep in mind that the 54% owned by the general public are spread across thousands, possibly millions of people. And those individual people are not coordinated. So it's unlikely that they would get together and outvote whatever Jeff wants to do with the corporation. So although there's some risk, he's still relatively safe. What might happen though, is a competing corporation or another company or individual that has an interest in Triple X Coffee Incorporated might show up on the scene. Now, these individuals who have purchased the shares on the open market, one reason that they purchased those shares is the hope that the value of the shares will increase, they can sell them and earn a profit. Well, if the rival corporation, or in other words, the hostile corporation shows up and offers to buy those shares and pay more than whatever the market value is, it's likely that a number of shareholders would be willing to sell. So what would happen? Greater and greater percentages of the corporation end up coming into the possession of the hostile corporation. In this example, the hostile corporation has managed to acquire 48% of the shares of Triple X Coffee Incorporated. That's one entity that owns 48% of the company. Jeff, at this point, only owns 46%. The majority, or in other words, the entity that now controls Triple X Coffee Incorporated, is the hostile corporation. 